Hello and welcome everyone. We are live with another uh, free lesson with Randy from Peanut Butterfish Lessons. If you're joining us live, be sure and comment hashtag live. If you're joining us on the replay, put in hashtag replay. That way we can know to keep an eye out for your comments and see who is joining us today. Please let me know where you're joining us from and who you have joining us. So Randy, tell us a little bit about what we're going to be doing today. We are going to be doing some trivia questions about U.S. territories. And then we are going to be doing a little following direction exercise. You will need to have this paper printed out and the link should be in the, where you can find it right now, right Amelia? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be sharing the okay. link. And so you'll just need to print out download. page three if you haven't already. And as you're jumping in, if you want to tell us if you, and of course for the kids, if you knew there are parts of the United States that aren't states, did you know that? And don't tell me any that you know, because that's going to be one of our trivia questions. But I'm interested to see who knows that there's parts of the United States that are not actually states. Hi, Celine. We got Celine joining us from Dallas, Texas. So as we have people filtering in today, it looks like we have 19 people joining us live. So go ahead Good. and share where you're joining us from. We're going to be getting started really soon. I just want everyone to have a chance to go ahead and get that overview sample so that you guys can participate. So go ahead and put in the comments where you're joining us from and who you have joining us. So this is what it's going to look like here. Is that right, Randy? Yes, so I thought I'd hold it up again. So if you click on the PDF that Amelia shared in the comments and print out page three, you'll be all set. And you've got some time because we're going to do the trivia questions first. So don't don't stress that you got like one minute to print this out. You got some time. So we got Lorena from California, Jan from Massachusetts. Hi, guys. Uh, Tywin from Texas as well. If you haven't had a chance to check out the Homeschool Quest mobile magazine, uh, Randy also has some information in there as well that you can be able to read. We have some really great articles all about homeschooling, tips and tricks for helping you to be able to homeschool on the go. I know that you guys are all really busy in the summer, so if you guys want some tips on being able to homeschool from the car or um, hope to save money while you're homeschooling on the road, there's some really great articles in there for you. And that is available for you guys to read for free online on our website. We got Brev from Oklahoma and Candace from Georgia joining us live. And I asked before a lot of people popped in, but I'm asking the kids if they know that there's parts of the United States that are not actual states. So if you want to share that in the chat, don't share the names because that's going to be one of our trivia questions. But just a yes or no if you knew there are parts of the United States that are not states. All right, we've got about 30 people joining us live now. Oh, uh, good. Randy, let's go ahead. I want to talk to them about a little bit about peanut butter fish, fish lessons. So a lot of what you're doing is because, you know, children, whether they have learning disability difficulties or not, um, they benefit from learning activities that use multiple senses. So that's visual, auditory, and tactile senses. So this allows them to form more connections in their brain and remember the material better. So the goal that Randy has with Peanut Butter Fish Lessons is to share with other busy homeschooling parents and educators the research that she has done about foundational skills and multisensory learning materials that she has created. So tell us a little bit more about Peanut Butter Fish Lessons and your goals with the materials that you provide there. 
Sure. I was a speech language therapist for 20 years. In my last like full year, I did a little contract work after, but my last full year was in a middle school working with kids with learning disabilities. And that is actually the year I decided I was going to homeschool my own children because <laughs> I saw how hard it is for kids with learning challenges to get caught up on what they need to catch up on, but also are supposed to be learning what they're learning at their grade level, which they're not really functioning at their grade level. So from that, I wanted to create content that really all kids could learn from, whether you were ahead of the game or needed to catch up a little bit. So that's where Peanut Butterfish Lessons came into being and our homeschool journey started nine years ago. That's fantastic. So uh, are you ready to get started and start do this kick off this class? Sure, as long as I can get slides up. Do I just click on the slide button? There we okay. go. Perfect. All right, so we are going to do some trivia about the U.S. territories. And real quick, if you joined us late, Amelia put a PDF in the chat thread there. And if you print off page three, if you haven't already, while we're doing the trivia, then you'll be set for part two of the class. All right, so let's see what you know. Just comment in the chat and I'll give you know each question in a minute or two. How many US territories do you think there are? And there's a few different numbers depending on you count them, how you count them, but how many do you think there are? Amelia, like, do you have a guess? Do you know? On how many U.S. territories? So mm -hmm. that does that include um, states or is that outside of states? No, nope. no, nope. just outside of states. I think that there's about like five or six. Okay. So my, and so my in the thread said six as well. And so. just a reminder with any of these uh, trivia, I don't peek at the answers beforehand. I'm not using Google. <laughs> So you're getting my genuine uh, actual information that I think. So just because I say it doesn't mean that it's the right answer. All right. <laughs> awesome. All right. So we got six and seven. I think you said five or six. There are mm -hmm. 16 that are considered U.S. territories. Some counts are 14 because there's two that are disputed. There's like one that Haiti says it's their part of their country and we say, no, it's part of ours. So between 14 and 16 is how many territories there are. But I know why you're saying like five to seven and we're gonna get there right now. That's how many have permanent residents in them? Oh. Mm -hmm. That's what you were thinking about, I think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say like, could, more, like closer to that, the, the five to six range. Okay. So you're sticking with five to six. Let's see if anybody else has a new idea. Show up in the thread. All right. So I said five. All right. Five is the correct number. So that's why when you're thinking six, seven, you're, you've, heard of some and that's what you're thinking mm -hmm. of. So we'll get to what those are. Can you name any of the five territories that have residents? Okay, I'm going to let people put some answers in there before I give some okay. ideas. Okay. I want to steal anyone's points here if you guys keep the okay. score on. <laughs> and while people are answering, I think it's important that we recognize what the, if you live in the United States, what our territories are, because I mean, I'm, it's very common that people think they're other countries and they're not actually other countries. They're part of our country. And a lot of the residents in a lot of these territories serve in our military. So it's just important to know that they're really, they're part of us. They're one of us. All right. Somebody has said Guam and PR, which I'm assuming is Puerto Rico. And those are both correct. Let's see if there's any others that are going to pop up in here. Amelia, did you have any others to add? Um, I believe that there's um, Puerto Rico is one of them and Costa Rica. 
and no. the U.S. Virgin Islands. U.S. Virgin Islands, yep. Those are the ones I know off the top of my head. Okay, so we also the Virgin Islands. So there's British Virgin Islands in U.S. Virgin Islands. And I'm going to go and share the other ones. We got Puerto Rico, which has, well, I won't say it because I can't remember if I put this in as a trivia question. I'll tell you at the end. Okay, we have U.S. Virgin Islands. We have American Samoa. There is also a, just Samoa, which is a separate oh. country. So American Samoa is part of the U.S. and Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands. So Guam is actually one of the Mariana Islands. And so, and then the rest are a separate territory called the Northern Mariana Islands. So those are the ones with people on them. And we'll learn about the other 11 when we get to our following directions. All right, so are you a U.S. citizen if you're born in a U.S. territory? Oh, I don't know the answer to that. And I think these, I thought said rapid fire above them. I'm almost wondering if I made a different set into the PDF. That's okay. So just quick yes or no. Do you think you're a U.S. citizen if you're born in a U.S. territory? We got a yes in the thread. We got two yeses. All right, what do you think, Amelia? I genuinely don't know the answer to this one. I'm, I'm actually right. like very curious to know. So yes, unless that territory is American Samoa. So they just have, so each territory has, I call it a contract because like in the business world, that's just what I think. So it's a contract mm -hmm. with the United States. So theirs is slightly different. So if your parents are U.S. citizens, then you are a U.S. citizen born in American Samoa. Otherwise, you are a U.S. national, which is an easier path to getting your citizenship than if you were not a U.S. national. I'm not going to pretend to understand it all, but that's the story. So, yes. But the other four, you are automatically a U.S. citizen. All right. What was the last territory to become a state? So it's a state now, but it was a territory. And it was the last territory to become a state. Okay, guys, put your thinking caps on. Put it in the comments. All right, we've got two Hawaii and we have a Puerto Rico. So let's see who's right. We got another Hawaii. And the Hawaii people have got it. It was Hawaii, it was a territory. And then I think it was 1949, if I'm wrong on that, correct me, that it became a state. Puerto Rico, there's been lots of talk about them becoming a state. They actually have votes in Puerto Rico about what they want to do. And I think it's pretty, a lot of times like 50-50 want to become a state and 50 um, want to be independent of the United mm -hmm. States. But Congress would need to do something and that doesn't seem to be happening. So I don't know if the vote in Puerto Rico would be different if they knew like it would actually happen. But so that is where that, so if another one becomes a state, I do think it would probably be Puerto Rico would be the next one. All right, here's the rapid fire round. Okay, so these are quick yes, no's. Do you need a passport? If you live in the United States, U.S. citizen, do you need a passport to travel to the U.S. territories? I don't think so. I don't think you need one. All right, Amelia says no. And I can't see people's names, so you're all just oh. Facebook users to me. So someone else said no. We've got Christina. We've got lots of no's. Josie, uh, Tywina, Brev. So all of them are saying no. They don't think that you need a specific. I we have smart people in our class today. You're right. You do not need a U.S. passport. So it makes it easy places to visit. Relatively. Still got to fly there. All right. Rapid fire. Can you use U.S. dollars to purchase stuff while you're in the U.S. territory?
That's a yes good question. or no. I think it might depend on the territory. You know, you're making me question now if it was all the territories or not. I have the same answer. Okay, somebody says yes in the thread. Now everybody else is questioning. I'm questioning myself now. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's yes to all of them. Okay, I don't know so why I'm questioning myself. Rev and Josie both think that it's yes. All right, I think they're right. I'm looking real quick. Yes, the three I checked are yes. I'm pretty sure they all were. I don't know why I'm questioning myself. All right, if anybody looks up, what was it? Northern Mariana Islands and Guam and finds differently. I'm sure it's not Guam because Guam has, the, a quarter of Guam is military bases. So, oh, wow. yeah, a quarter of the land. Okay, rapid fire round. Can people living in the U.S. territories vote for the U.S. president? I'm going to Google the last two about the U.S. dollar. Well, you think. I don't think so. I think that the answer to this is no. All right. Again, let's see what remember, other people everyone, think. this is based on my information, my perspective. So, so Chris, yeah, everyone's unanimously looks like is saying they don't think so. You are correct. They cannot vote for president. They can actually vote in a primary but they can't vote in the general election. My dog here was supposed to be given like one of those like weird faces looking at like, huh, what? It's a bummer, he's not working there. So yeah, so think about that. You live in the United States, but you can't vote for president. It's interesting. All right, do people living in the US territories have a congressperson with voting powers who represents them? What do you think, yes or no? don't think so. I think I'm going to answer no to this one as well. I'm learning all kinds of things today. This is great. Love I know, because really, so many of us don't know much about the U.S. territories. I didn't learn about them in school. So. That's what I love about these videos is that no matter what age you are, you're going to get something out of these classes. Mm -hmm. always, each person brings a unique perspective to it and their own research, especially the trivia ones are a lot of fun. All right. So somebody suggests, I think that was to this question. Maybe it was the last question. I'm going to go ahead and know. So they do, and I'm not even sure they all have one. They do have some Congress people who go, they can serve on committees and they can like advise or speeches that they'll give. Um, they can try to push bills through, but they cannot actually vote on the bills when they come to a floor vote. All right, that was our last trivia question. So it is time for part two, where you need a map and you need colored pencils. I should have reminded you of that at the beginning, sorry. So take a minute and grab some colored pencils, crayons, markers, whatever you want. We're going to go through all 16 on here, and I'm going to tell you a fact about each one. Okay, so if you have little, littler children that this might be hard for, just help them out as much as you can. Um, you can show them where they're supposed to do things. You can remind them. If you kind of have like middle, like third to fifth grade kids, let them try to just do it on their own. I'm going to say each one twice. And then if you have older kids, my challenge, or if you or younger kids who want a challenge, is to remember something about the fact and then tell your grown up there what it was after you filed the direction. So this can work on your memory. Okay. All right. Can I get a couple yeses that you're ready? Anybody ready to listen to the directions? 
Come on, I'm waiting to hear those yeses. So this is an example of, I have lots of products called Listening to Learn. So they are direction following, where kids are coloring, they're drawing, they're writing. It's fun, they're fun. You are learning facts, you're working on your listening skills, you're developing important language related to listening. Like today we're gonna have words like above and below and between that are important um, following direction words. You're starting to work on a little note taking. So you're having listen and do stuff on paper, which is the beginning of note taking, which you have to do more like in high school or college, or if you're sitting in meetings with someone. So that is the purpose of this. I have a whole bundle about the five US territories that have permanent residence. So each territory has two um, listening and learns. One is a map of the territory, similar to our big map here today and the other is more like a notebooking page with pictures on it related to the territory and then what we're doing today is a free sample from that packet that is just an overview big picture of the 16 territories all right we're going to get started so when you get one of these listening and learns you basically parents you just read through the instructions i try to make it super easy for you so i'm just going to read it like i was doing it with my own kids except i'm going to see each direction twice i don't normally do that for my own kids they have to ask for a repetition if they want it all right today we're going to learn about the 16 territories of the united states all of them are islands groups of islands or atolls and that word is spelled A-T-O-L-L-S. And I thought it was atolls until I was making this and I looked it up and it's atolls, like at all. Only five of them have permanent residence. So we're gonna start with those and their names are big and bold on your map. Okay, so you'll see that five of them have bigger, bolder names. All right, but first, Here's direction number one. First, make a dot with your favorite color where you live on the map. Important to center yourself so you then can picture everything around you. And I'll read that again. Make a dot with your favorite color where you live on the map. All right. Now we're gonna talk about the five with residents. Puerto Rico in the Caribbean Sea is the closest territory to the US mainland with residents. This territory was claimed by Christopher Columbus in 1493. You hear about him in 1492. He didn't make it to Puerto Rico until 1493. Draw a boat with a sail above Puerto Rico. And I'll read that again. Puerto Rico in the Caribbean Sea is the closest territory to the U.S. mainland with residents. This territory was claimed by Christopher Columbus in 1493. Draw a boat with a sail above Puerto Rico. All right, we're moving on. Just to the east of Puerto Rico are a series of islands called the U.S. Virgin Islands. They were a popular place for pirates to hang out 300 years ago. Draw a black pirate flag below the U.S. Virgin Islands. And I'll read it again. Just to the east of Puerto Rico are a series of islands called the U.S. Virgin Islands. They were a popular place for pirates to hang out 300 years ago. Draw a black pirate flag below the U.S. Virgin Islands. All right, we're moving on. 
Now let's head over to the Pacific Ocean to American Samoa. This is the only U.S. territory with residence that is south of the equator. About halfway between Guam and American Samoa, draw a blue horizontal line across the entire map. This is the equator. I'll read it again. Let's head over to the Pacific Ocean to American Samoa. This is the only U.S. territory with residence that is south of the equator. About halfway between Guam and American Samoa, draw a blue horizontal line, I'll give you a little cue there, across the entire map. This is the equator. Now I'm curious if anybody's doing the challenge and remembering something about the fact and telling their parents. If you're doing that, put yes in the chat. All right, we're on number five. We've got 12 directions, we're on number five. Now travel northwest to Guam. Two US military bases here take up one fourth of Guam. Draw an airplane below Guam. One of the military bases is an Air Force military base. Now I'll repeat it. Now travel northwest to Guam. Two US military bases here take up one fourth of Guam. Draw an airplane below Guam. And you'll see on your map, there's not like actual islands there because if you're looking at the whole world, like this map is, the islands are teeny, teeny, tiny and they wouldn't show up. So it would not be to scale at all. So that's why there's just arrows there. All right, number six. Near Guam are the Northern Mariana Islands, which are really a mountain range that is mostly under water. Next to them is the Mariana Trench, the deepest part of the ocean. Draw a blue V, the letter V, in between Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands. This trench is seven miles deep. Have you all heard of the Mariana Trench before? It's very interesting. I'll read yeah, that again. Go ahead. Of the Mariana Trench and all of the different fascinating creatures that live in it. I didn't realize yes. that it was um, on one of the U.S. territories, like near one of the U.S. territories. That's really interesting. Yes. Yeah, so we'd say Mount I Mount Everest is the tallest mountain on on the Earth, but it's really if you went from the ocean floor up, it's really that mountain that is the Mariana Trench, and then the top is the Northern Mariana Islands. So. It's interesting because I'm trying to think how tall Mount Everest is in miles. I don't even think it's half of the Mariana Trench. Mm -hmm. All right, I need to read that again. Near Guam are the Northern Mariana Islands, which are really a mountain range that is mostly underwater. Next to them is the Mariana Trench, the deepest part of the ocean. Draw a blue V in between Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands. This trench is seven miles deep. All right, so if you're counting, we've done the five territories with residents, and now we're moving on. So five of the U.S. territories are atolls, and these are ring-shaped islands that encircle water called a lagoon. So when we're done today, Google atoll, remember A-T-O-L-L, -L, and look at a picture so you can picture what I'm talking about. They are kind of like swimming pools made by nature. Draw a green ring around the tips of the arrows for Wake Island, Midway Atoll, Johnston Atoll, 
Baker Island and Palmyra Atoll. I'm just going to read that last sentence again. Draw a green ring around the tips of the arrows for Wake Island, Midway Atoll, Johnston Atoll, Baker Island, and Palmyra Atoll. Did you get them? It's a lot. All right, Howland and Jarvis Islands, this is number eight, sorry. Howland and Jarvis Islands are coral islands, meaning they are just a few feet above the water and they're made of coral sand. Coral sand is crushed limestone, usually from the skeletons of marine animals. Draw very light tan circles at the tips of the arrows of Howland and Jarvis Islands. And I'll read just that last sentence again. Draw very light tan circles at the tips of the arrows of Howland and Jarvis Islands. So if you ever go walking on an island or a beach with coral sand, you are walking on the skeletons of marine animals, meaning fish and sharks and crabs, whatever else you would find in the ocean that has skeleton, a skeleton. Kind of spooky. <laughs> I know it is. I never knew that until I was doing this research. All right, we're on number nine. Kingman Reef is a triangle-shaped reef that is partially underwater. And coral reefs are made up of corals, which are animals. The coral is held together by calcium carbonate, and the reefs can become very large. Kingman Reef is 10 miles long. Draw an orange triangle at the tip of the arrow for Kingman Reef. I'll read those last two sentences again. Kingman Reef is 10 miles long. Draw an orange triangle at the tip of the arrow for Kingman Reef. All right, we're on number 10. Now let's head back to the Caribbean Sea near Puerto Rico. Serenia Bank is another coral reef that is mostly underwater. Draw a pink oval at the tip of the arrow for Serenia Bank. And I'm assuming those two L's are said with a Spanish sound, the Y, but maybe it's Serenilla, I'm not sure. And I'll read that last sentence to you again. Draw a pink oval at the tip of the arrow for Serenilla, for Serenia Bank. All right, we're at number 11. Bajo Nuevo Bank is another coral reef with some islets, which is just small islands. One islet has a lighthouse on it. Draw a small lighthouse above the words Bajo Nuevo Bank. Doesn't need to be fancy, just whatever you think a lighthouse would look like. I'll read it again. One islet of Bajo Nuevo Bank has a lighthouse on it. Draw a small lighthouse above the words Bajo Nuevo Bank. All right, we're on number 12, and I'm going to ask you at the end to tell me one fact you learned. So if you don't remember anything yet, go listen to number 12. The last U.S. territory is Navassa Island. This island is currently overseen by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, but its ownership 
is currently disputed between the U.S. and Haiti. Below the words Navassa Island, write Haiti with a question mark. And Haiti is spelled H-A-I-T-I. -I. I'll read that last sentence again. Below the words Navassa Island, write Haiti with a question mark. H-A-I-T-I. -I. And Haiti is a country, um, part of an island down in the Caribbean Sea. All right, so when you're done, I would like to know one fact you remember from what we just read. You can put it in the chat. If anybody needs a repeat of anything, let me know. Amelia, do you remember one fact? Just typing it in the comments there because I wanted to follow your instructions. <laughs> oh, okay. I will look for it in the comments then. Yes, a quarter of Guam is military base. It's actually two separate. I think one is Navy and one is Air Force. And you'll see if you learn more about all these U.S. territories, the ones in the Pacific were very involved in World War II. Um, you might have heard of the island of Saipan, S-A-I-P-A-N. There was a big battle there. That's part of the Northern Mariana Islands. And also, I believe it's that island is where is it the Enola Gay? I think that's the name of it. But the plane that dropped the atomic bombs on Japan left the Northern Mariana Islands. That's where it took off of. All right, five U.S. territories are atolls, yes. The Mariana Trench is part of the Northern Mariana Islands and the islands are actually the tip of a mountain range. That is correct. So it looks like people were really actually finding this class helpful to actually learn facts. So tell us a little bit about why the listen and learn class style works. Why, how does that help people to actually remember this information? Well, first of all, it's fun. So it's more fun if you're listening to little chunks of facts and then you're getting to use your motor part of your brain to draw, to color, which then gives you something visually to remember. And it's getting you ready. Like I know if I'm learning new information about something, it helps me to draw it out, especially in science or something. If you're learning how photosynthesis works, maybe, which is how plants um, take sunlight and, oh gosh, no, I'm gonna forget what they take with the sunlight, but they use it to make food. You know, if you draw that out as a picture, it's much easier to remember. So that's why the listening to learn helps you remember stuff better, facts better. And if somebody wants to put in the chat what is needed for photosynthesis, it's carbon dioxide, right? Mm hmm. Is it three things though? Sun, carbon dioxide? Or is it just two? I don't know. It's been a little bit since we've covered that. All right, any other facts anybody remembers that we learned today? Does anybody remember how long King Min Reef was? Or has anybody looked up a picture of an atoll? Because they're pretty neat to look at. Yes, Kingman's Reef was 10 miles. Is 10 miles, not miles. Is 10 miles. Good. Did you all know that coral is actually animals? We did a unit study in our home school, which I actually put in our store too last year on the Great Barrier Reef. So we did a deep dive, no pun intended, into um, coral. 
Because I don't think I knew it was animals until we did that last year. Oh, you put a picture in there. That's awesome. Yeah. You put a link to a search result for images so that people can see that because it is really cool. Mm-hmm. All right, any other facts anybody wants to share? If you guys enjoyed this video class, uh, be sure to RSVP to Randy's next class as well. I went ahead and put a link in the comments so that you can be able to say you're interested or going to the next class. You can get a heads up on what the next topic is going to be, what we're going to be covering and going over in July. It is going to be... I haven't told you what it's going to be yet. <laughs> Let's see. It's going to be on July 18th, same mm -hmm. time and day. So it's going to be Tuesday, 12 p.m. Um, PT, uh, PADT, and it will also convert automatically to your time zone. So whatever time that it lists there is the correct time for your time zone. So you guys can go ahead and click on the link and see that you're going to be going to that class. It most likely will have some kind of history take on it, American history. I haven't decided exactly what that class can be. So if you guys have any ideas, I'm sure Randy will appreciate any comments. Sure. If there's a particular subject in American history you want to learn about, put it in the comments now. That would be helpful. Or in the comments in that event. Could do either one. Thank you, you so much for joining us. That live everyone i hope that you enjoyed this class i know that i had a lot of fun and learned a lot of new facts and i think everyone else did too thank you so much for joining us randy we really appreciate you coming here and doing this free class for everyone thanks for letting me come in here and do the free class i appreciate it all right bye everyone bye